All right, so let's let's get into unit vectors. What do we mean by a unit vector? So we have a, a vector here, uh, negative 5, 3. So what does that mean? Again, remember that means we go you know, 5 units in the negative x direction. We go 3 units up in the positive y direction. So there's, there's our vector. And the magnitude currently of this vector is um, the square root of negative 5 squared, which is 25, plus the 3 squared, which is 9. And so right now our vector has a magnitude of 25 plus 9 is 34. All right, and that breaks down to 2 and 17, so we can't simplify that anymore. But the big point is its magnitude is bigger than five almost six unit vector means magnitude one we want the magnitude to be one so what does that mean that means since this the 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 square root of 34 we need something that points in the same direction but has a magnitude of only one instead of almost six. So what do we do? Well, a unit vector will always be the original vector divided by its magnitude. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we take this five, negative five and three and we divide it by one or we divide it by the square root of 34 or multiply by one over the square root of 34. What happens is we'll get a new vector. So if we multiply by one over the square root of 34 um, times our old vector, we get a new vector. And this vector, um, I can actually just write it as. Remember, it's like the distributive property. I, I just give this scalar to each one of these, and I get negative 5 over the square root of 34 and 3 over the square root of 34. And that is my, uh, my new unit vector. What's the magnitude of this? Uh, the magnitude of this thing is the square root of the x component squared. So the top squared would be negative 5 squared would be positive 25. All right, the bottom squared is the square root of 34 squared, which is 34. Plus the 3 squared, the numerator squared, is 9. The denominator squared is 34. We got common denominators, so we just add numerators, and we get 34 over 34, which is 1. And the square root of 1 is one. So now we have a magnitude of one. So all we have to do to get um, these vectors in, uh, uh, all we have to do to get a vector pointing in the same direction as u is, uh, but unit length is to divide by its current magnitude. So its current magnitude is square root of 34. So I divide the components by that magnitude, and I get a vector whose magnitude is now 1. It's pointed in the same direction, but it has one uh, a length of 1 now. All right, I got Desmos now. I got a, this is the point. This is the, where the, the vector would end. So you see that vector there ending at that point. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to divide this by um, the square root of 34, both components. And now that, remember, this is where the new vector would end. Oops, divided by SQRT. All right, now you can see with the origin, if I put the origin in there, they're all collinear, meaning they're all on the same line. Uh, what line are they on? What line is this? Well, this is how far I went from the origin in the x direction, this is how much I went in the y direction. Remember, slope 
is the change in y. So we went up 3 divided by the change in x. Change in x is a minus 5. All right, and so if I just type in y equals mx plus b, b, the y-intercept is 0, so b is 0. So mx would just be negative 3 fifths x. And you see that's the line that we're on. Okay, so that was our original vector if we stop this thing at um, negative 5. That's the original vector, and you see this little green one is also that vector, but now we're dividing the 5 by the square root of 34. And that's our other little vector. So they are pointed in the same, exact same direction, but one is just unit length, where the other one is much longer. Alright, we got the first part here done. We got part A done. Part B says the linear combination of i and j equivalent to u. Well, the i vector is just the vector 1, 0. All right, and the j vector is the vector 0, 1. So this is a unit vector that lies on the, the, the x-axis. This is a unit vector that lies on the y-axis. And any vector can be written as a linear combination of the i and j vectors simply by multiplying the x component times the i vector and adding the y component times the j vector. And this is simply just another way to write the original vector. Instead of using the notation with the with the little uh, order symbols kind of uh, to use the components times i and j. So this is what we call ij notation. And this is the like the standard vector component notation. All right, and then we get into applications of this stuff, the vectors. We can that's where trig comes in. That's why this is in a trig class. So when we uh, are modeling velocity with vectors, that's a very common thing to do with physics, is to model velocity with vectors. We have a ball that's going uh, 20 degrees off the horizontal at 100 miles an hour. So what does this mean? So here's the horizontal. Pretend that's perfectly straight horizontal. And so this ball is coming off of that, off the bat, at 20 degrees. And it's moving in that direction. And the magnitude is the speed at which it's moving when we're talking a velocity vector. So that's moving 100 miles per hour. All right? So if we, we say this vector is V, this, this vector right here, if we call it V, the magnitude of V is 100. Right? And our units are miles per hour. Now, it wants to, st to represent this velocity in vector form. Well, for vector form, I need to talk about the horizontal components of this vector and then the vertical components. Because this vector v, I could write it as this horizontal vector plus this vertical vector. How do we add vectors? We add from the... Uh, end of one, the, the head end of one, plus the tail end of the other. So this vector plus this vector is this vector. All right? And now, because left and right, up and down are 90 degrees, this becomes a right triangle. And because it's right triangle and we got an angle in the middle, we can describe the adjacent side of this angle and the opposite side in terms of sine and cosine. So the cosine of 20 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse happens to be this vector v. So what's the adjacent side? What is this side down here? The adjacent side is vector v. And it's magnitude, really, because we're talking about 
side length, so we, we need the numbers. So it's the magnitude of V times the cosine of that angle we're given. And then likewise, this is 100, and this is our 20 degree angle. Then the vertical component of the velocity is going to be the magnitude times the um, sine of the 20. So we can just write it like this, since both of them are getting multiplied by 100. So that's all we have to do. Magnitude times the cosine of the angle, sine of the angle. And that will give us our vector components. All right, one thing to be um, aware about when, when you're seeing those problems, don't just say, all right, well, here's the velocity, here's an angle. You know, that this is, um, these are bearings. So bearings are a little bit different. So let me draw a picture here. So this is north, east, west, south, right? And so this plane is bl uh, flying 200 miles per hour uh, north, 33 degrees east. So the 33 degrees is right here. That's our 33 degree angle. And then we have a wind with velocity of 35 miles an hour uh, north, 47 degrees west. So north, 47 degrees west. So this is... I got a magnitude of 200, and this has a magnitude of uh, 35. All right, there's that part right there. Uh, that's our 47 degrees. 47. Yeah, you get the idea. And this is the 33. So the bearings are, you start on either the north or the south, and then you move off the north or the south by that, that angle in, in the direction of this. So north 33 degrees east, we started on north, we went 33 degrees to the right. North 47 degrees west, we started on north, we went 47 degrees to the left. So when we do these bearing problems, when we want to get the vector components of these, we want these angles, the angle from zero up to this, this vector that represents the airplane's speed. And then we want this angle that represents that. So if this is 33, then this angle here is 57. And this is the angle we'll use when we are coming to coming up with the vector components of the airplane and the same likewise here this is 47 degrees off of north well that's 90 degrees from east to north plus 47 more so this second angle here is 90 plus 47 which is 137 So when we do our 200 times the sine, uh, the cosine of, of this and the sine of it, it's not going to be this angle or this angle. It's going to be these two angles because these are the ones that give us the right uh, values. This is, when we're talking sine, cosine of an angle, it's the angle off the positive x-axis, or in this case, east. Okay, so we need to make sure that we make that adjustment before we start trying to come up with the uh, vector components of these uh, velocities. Because ultimately what we're going to do is add them together to get our resultant. Remember, resultant means you're adding vectors together. So we're going to add these two vectors up, but we need their x and y components. So we need sine and cosine again. But we need the right, the, not right angles, the correct angles to put in there to get the numbers right. So there's the 33 uh, degrees east of north is 57 degrees off the east. So that's what we the first thing we said. And then likewise, the uh, other one, the 47 degrees uh, west of north, is 137 degrees measured from due east. So again, we want we want it measured off that positive x-axis, so we can get the right numbers. So there's the plane. 
the 200 miles an hour it's is the velocity and then the 57 degrees is the one we want and then for the wind we want to use the 137 degrees from due east and that'll be what we combine together so when we add these together we get these two numbers okay again the 83 is coming from adding these two that one's negative we add these two we get that one 91.6 so this is the velocity of the plane with the wind component thrown in there and then to get the magnitude we just to get the speed the true speed of the plane uh, with the wind and, and uh, being factored in it's not 200 anymore it's almost 209 all right and then the bearing how do we get the bearing so um, we can take this angle right here uh, 191 the, the y component divided by the x component and we get the true bearing of this thing so 66.5 degrees that's north of east that's off of the east um, due east so if we needed to you know give a, get a bearing we could subtract this from 90 and then that would be the angle off of north if we wanted if we needed to write it as a bearing so there's the the uh, picture of the problem the planes flying in this direction but because of the wind blowing this crosswind blowing in this direction the resultant is the actual velocity and direction the plane is moving okay so the there was a component of the wind moving a little bit in the same direction so it is um, you know it's longer uh, than than without the wind so that means it has more magnitude more more speed um, but it is blowing it a little bit off of its course and this is you know this this is stuff that's actually done by um, air traffic controllers all the time you know the winds blowing the planes are flying into the wind and they get off course and they have to be uh, readjusted in flight a lot 